Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue, a new initiative takes root at MTSU with promise for botanical medicine. The roots are as old as ancient China and as new as the East Tennessee ginseng seeds planted at the MTSU farm. Let freedom sing. The 15th anniversary celebration of free speech and music attracts artists to Nashville's Bluebird Cafe. And who is commissioned to capture the sights and sounds? Young MTSU electronic media professionals. See them at work. A century and a half ago, Tennessee farm families were forced to turn their plowshares into swords. As the Civil War sesquicentennial is commemorated, many of these farms are still in the same families. They are century farms, documented in a new book by the MTSU Center for Historic Preservation. MTSU's Literacy Studies program is working on the front lines of an educational crisis. The problem isn't only students who lack necessary reading skills, but a shortage of practitioners trained to help. Plus plenty of Blue Raider highlights and breaking ground on a new tennis facility. All that and more coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue. Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. We're coming to you this month from a backdrop view of MTSU's new science building scheduled for classes in the fall of 2015. One group of researchers eager to get into the new science labs is the Tennessee Center for Botanical Research, currently housed in the Davis Science Building. The MTSU researchers are collaborating with scientists in China to develop new knowledge on how to produce ginseng and its immune boosting benefits more economically. As announced November 13th, the MTSU farm will be involved in the growing process. I'm very pleased, ladies and gentlemen, to announce today that with this ceremony, MTSU, its proud faculty, its outstanding students, and its incredible alums and supporters will immediately begin the exploration and the study of growing ginseng. And that relationship that Dr. McPhee has established with the, with the people in the People's Republic of China, he's established over 20 years. We would not have been able to be standing here today without that relationship. It's not a single compound that's coming from ginseng that does what it does. It's a class of compound called the ginsenicides, and collectively about 30 of these are what makes ginseng stimulate the immune system. So what we're doing is we're setting up a system where we can measure that. They conduct these research to determine the promise and the possibility of developing drugs and medication to treat various types of ailments, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, etc. So now it's up to us to take it to the next step by what we're doing here today is planting that seed and hopefully with the, the, the brain power that we have and the world-class facility. So you can see uh, we use different dyes to um, connect with different targets that we want to study. And again, if this was another crop, we wouldn't consider this at all. But because of the value of ginseng and the demand, and it's just going through the roof, it's absolutely something we want to look at. And we can come out to this beautiful farm and plant the seed and start making this a statewide crop, a cash crop. To literally bring and plant the seeds of this tremendous research opportunity. So many good things going on here at MTSU, revolving around production agriculture. If the earth had a sense of humor and could laugh at us. I was wondering, would the earth laugh at the millions and billions of science dollars that we put in to find chemicals to fight all kind of things with our health? When the earth has produced from the beginning of time amazing properties to heal our body. MTSU's new $147 million science building scheduled for opening for classes in spring 2015 has received a $1.5 million grant from the Christie Houston Foundation. 
Foundation President Bob Mifflin says the award reflects the nonprofit's mission to enhance the quality of life in Rutherford County with an emphasis on health care. Construction of the state-of-the-art science building with 257,000 gross square feet of space continues to make progress. Turner Construction is scheduled to substantially complete the project by the summer of 2014 with move-in in the fall of 2014 and the first classes for spring 2015. While we're on the subject of science, an MTSU professor who for years has researched the science of alternative fuels has yet another award to his credit. Agribusiness and agri-science professor Dr. Cliff Ricketts is the recipient of the National Future Farmers of America VIP citation. Over his career in higher education, Dr. Ricketts has guided more than 300 agriculture education majors to teaching careers. Recognized for helping further the mission of FFA, Ricketts is among nine other national VIP citation recipients. Well, for the 15th year, the Museum Institute's First Amendment Center showcased music that has been banned or censored with its signature program, Freedom Sings. It's a program that was launched in the Bluebird Cafe in 1999 and has toured college campuses. This year, MTSU electronic media students got in on the act, working behind the scenes to record the show for future broadcast. MTSU's mobile production truck is already in place when the tour bus of electronic media students arrives behind the popular Bluebird Cafe music venue in West Nashville. The production students pour out for a long night of behind the scenes work for Freedom Sings, a 15th anniversary celebration of the First Amendment. The backup band is already tuning instruments when MTSU students begin setting camera angles and making lighting adjustments. There are hundreds of feet of cable to be run and multiple tweaks to be made before showtime, including critical audio and video levels. Hand to your right, get that pole out of your shot. Direct music is kind of difficult, you gotta really know the songs. And we had a hard time, we didn't really know what was coming up until about a week ago, so we didn't have much time to prepare for them. So when I'm cutting between cameras, I don't have any options to go to anything, so I always have me something. You're all being ISO'd, so act like you're live at all times. After a couple of hours of prep, it's showtime. I want to uh, also make a special note of the students from MTSU tonight who are helping us with the logistics and we're tweeting. Gene Polisinski, senior VP of the Museum Institute's First Amendment Center, kicks off the show with a nod to the students who are capturing every moment. Love is but a song we sing. We were getting into a rhythm, we get to a rhythm of the song, you know, you follow the beats. Return for us at last. Ray four. You know, luckily for this, we're going into post, so if they mess up, we can cover it up later on, hopefully, and so not to worry about it, but you just take it, grit your teeth, you move on as quick as you can. Just don't let, don't draw attention to yourself. That's what Dr. Neal, don't draw attention to your mistake, just move past it. Ray three. It's that type of professionalism that students like Dixon and his colleagues are learning at MTSU before hitting that first post-college job. I do enjoy it. It is a lot, but I do enjoy it, especially directing for live broadcasts like this. All night long, we're going to hear from people who've been part of this show for many, many years. It was fitting that Ken Paulson, dean of MTSU's College of Mass Communication and president of the First Amendment Center, would MC the show. Everyone. Pull out, pull out someone. Yeah, Daddy, don't you worry. I am the producer. I um, a lot of my work is on the front end for this type of shoot. Um, I was in contact with uh, the location on setting everything up in that aspect, working on the tech pack. In the production itself, um, I'm kind of sitting in the back and uh, kind of giving my input in on what type of uh, shots that we're taking. We're just close up. Ready, two, three, take three. But this is our first big foray into entertainment and music, so it's been a little bit of a learning curve for all of us. Among the performers was Gretchen Peters, who wrote Martina McBride's highly popular Independence Day. Peters was one of more than a dozen singer-songwriters interviewed by MT10 student news director Kelsey Lebichuk. But the Bluebird's like, oh. It was special because she had actually written a song. So it was maybe a little bit more personal than, you know, just singing someone else's song. She had been through the, the writing it. Well, she seemed all right, but I don't do it like I 
would love to produce and uh, just hopefully move on up in the markets. Students like Junior Melody Carson work behind the cameras, helping with lighting and recording interviews. Filming in a cafe, and we're kind of in the back. We have two handhelds running around and getting everything, and we have interviews in the green room. Then start pulling that way out. When you see the National Christmas Tree at the White House this holiday season, either on television or in person, you should know that some MTSU students helped create some of the ornaments. The students assisted 24 young artists with disabilities from across Tennessee who are served by VSA Tennessee. VSA Tennessee is a statewide organization that serves people with disabilities through the arts. We're part of an international organization. We were selected by the National Parks as the organization to create the ornaments for the state of Tennessee for the National Christmas Tree. We selected 24 young people who have participated in our VSA programs across the state. We have some with visual impairments, hearing impairments, Down syndrome, autism, attention deficit, the whole range. And they are creating ornaments that will go on the tree. We have MTSU students who are assisting them in that process and also who help set up the evening. They're also creating a mask and the mask is going on display at the Legislative Plaza in Nashville. And that is going to take place in February and March of next year. Uh, it, it's so great to be here on behalf of the Tennessee Arts Commission. I'd like to first uh, also thank MTSU uh, for partnering this great event. And I, um, I learned that MTSU was where VSA was created in Tennessee. So thank you for what MTSU does to help partner this. On behalf of the state of Tennessee and the Tennessee Arts Commission, um, thank you for, for serving Tennessee well and representing our state. And I hope you'll remember this always um, when you know that what you do are going to go uh, and represent Tennessee and Washington, D.C. during the Christmas holidays. The National Park System selected VSA Tennessee to make the state's ornaments for the National Christmas Tree. The 40th anniversary of the VSA program is in February 2014. I can think of younger days when living for my life was everything a man wanted to be. Barry Gibb, the iconic singer-songwriter for the Bee Gees, graced the stage of MTSU's Tucker Theater on October 28th. The legendary Gibb was honored as the inaugural fellow of the Center for Popular Music at MTSU's College of Mass Communication. And I can think of no one who de deserves better the inaugural fellowship of the Center for Popular Music than Barry Gibb, a man whose music making has spanned more than five decades whose music has touched all corners of the globe, and whose songs have formed the soundtrack to so many of our lives. If you're looking for a tabletop book as a holiday gift, look no further than MTSU's Center for Historic Preservation and Plowshares and Swords. The limited edition book with more than 100 images tells the Civil War stories of Tennessee's Century Farm families. Kanita Hankins co-authored the book with her late colleague, Michael Gavin. It is a credit to the succeeding generations that these stories have been kept and documented in many cases and passed down not only of the Civil War but of every period of Tennessee history. And we are grateful to them because these stories are to be continued. Plowshares and Swords is part of the Tennessee Civil War sesquicentennial commemoration. For information on ordering a copy, contact the MTSU Center for Historic Preservation at 615-898-2947 or simply email at this address. We'll be right back. School, we're trying to make their job easier by giving the children the skills that they need to be able to learn. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I'm a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I'm engaged in the life of this community. I'm a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I'm committed to reason, not violence. 
I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. Being True Blue is working to enhance our community. My name is Kobe Sherlock and I am True Blue. At Middle Tennessee State University, we are devoted to student success. We offer the advantages of a major comprehensive university with the care and attention found at a small college. We are a community that believes in learning, growth, and service. We hold these values dear, and there's a simple phrase that conveys them. I am true blue. I am true blue. I am true blue. Being True Blue is embracing unique perspectives. My name is Iris Montes and I am True Blue. Just down the road from Music City, Middle Tennessee State University's Department of Recording Industry is putting students on course for exciting careers in the music business. Whether they want to work behind the scenes or behind the mic, MTSU graduates have gone on to perform on the world's biggest stages and have found remarkable jobs with some of the industry's most respected labels and entertainment companies. This is just one community among many. Explore all that MTSU has to offer. Devoted to student success, Middle Tennessee State University. According to the U.S. Department of Education, 30 million adults in America can't read better than the average third grader. Similarly, nearly half of all students entering college must take remedial courses in reading or math. On the front lines of this educational crisis are the students and faculty in the Literacy Studies Ph.D. program here at Middle Tennessee State University. It's a program designed to address one of the country's most pressing needs the shortage of scholars, practitioners, administrators, and policymakers equipped to bridge the gap between the rapidly expanding body of scientific research on the development of literacy and educational practice. In general, I believe many students are struggling uh, in, in reading their grade level, uh, reading materials, and then many even high school graduates. I think the percentage is about 25% of high school graduates cannot read. Without being able to read and write, you're pretty much limited in just about everything. I mean, you can't go through a day without having to be literate. It is a interdisciplinary program that pulls from lots of different departments. It's from education, psychology, um, linguistics, speech and language pathology, and also biology. We are trying to understand the process of literacy, how uh, students learn language and then reading and everything related to literacy. And I especially try to bridge the gap between research practices and educational practices in school. It's not just a speculation. So you'd like to do research and then uh, based on the research findings, you'd like to help uh, students. I am the executive director of Learning Rx here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So we are very different from tutoring because we um, do not reteach the material that students are learning at school. We do more working on the cognitive skills, so we work more on things that you have to be able to do to be able to learn well. We increase a student's reading levels by um, three years in just as short as six months' time. It's the best program that I've ever actually seen that it really makes a difference in the way the student learns and the way they're able to um, read and write. We are trying to complement what they do here at school. We're trying to make their job easier by giving the children the skills that they need to be able to learn what's being presented by the teachers easier and faster. Why would someone with such a full schedule choose to devote their time to the Literacy Studies program here at MTSU? Uh, interdisciplinary uh, literacy studies, a PhD program, is a unique program in the nation. The professors that we have are amazing. We have great, they have a great um, team together. Um, they're very helpful and I really like the program. Everything I'm doing so far, I really enjoy. I don't remember if it was this year or last year, but the, the state actually 
I think passed a bill or some, some amendment that really put a lot of emphasis on teacher training being more familiar with the fundamental of how the brain works because we acknowledge that the base of the, ba the, the basis of learning is uh, you know depending on brain plasticity and, and brain function. Uh, I have developed two courses for that program that are both related to the neurobiological basis of literacy and language. He is measuring the EEG brain, so he has a harness uh, here. So he <laughs> the comes in, he just put that one on, on the student of, uh, head. We use a, a technique called uh, electroencephalogram, uh, which basically corresponds to an array of sensors that you place on somebody's uh, scalp and uh, it records the tiny electrical variation that are created by your neurons in your brain. We are primarily interested in looking at the neural correlate of speech perception and also written language, uh, but also uh, comparing those brain correlates to those that are also involved in music, especially because there are several studies in the past that have shown that musical training affects the way that you process language. Now, learning a language is a kind of learning culture. It's not just a language. You, you, you need to be exposed to different cultures to truly learn the language. Uh, I think one advantage is that we each bring also our own perspective about how uh, education uh, the education system is uh, in our own countries and, and um, that allow us to, to see the differences and the similarities and perhaps uh, you know, bring a little bit more of uh, yeah, a different perspective on those issues. So if you have only one culture, one language, and you are pretty much closed there, there inside, inside of that culture, but if you are exposed to different cultures, your understanding level will be, will be more enhanced. You know, we're trying to um, help people to become more aware of the ways in which literacy is taught and um, looking at research and how to um, make sure that we're using research-based approaches and not just whatever seems like the fun thing to do that day. So um, I think the program is really going to help to increase literacy across the United States and it's such a, such a major problem that we still have today. Being True Blue is giving your all on and off the court. My name is Ebony Rowe and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is embracing unique perspectives. My name is Iris Montes and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is helping students solve real world problems. My name is Cliff Ricketts and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is making the world a safer place. My name is Sam Willie, and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is helping others to reach their potential. My name is Daryl Freeman, and I am True Blue. Science shapes our society. The products, technologies, and efforts of the sciences affect much of our everyday lives. And the more advances we make, the more the careers of tomorrow will rely on a strong education in the basic and applied sciences. At MTSU, you will learn from Tennessee's best faculty, along with hands-on training with the latest equipment and facilities. Come and learn the science of success. Being True Blue is doing more than what's expected. My name is Ben Jones, and I am True Blue.
The Blue Raiders are bull bound after defeating Southern Mississippi 42 to 21 for a four straight victory. MTSU's defense deserved much of the credit for the win as the Blue Raiders established a new single season record for the most interceptions returned for a touchdown in a season with four. Sophomore Kevin Byard returned an interception 51 yards for a touchdown in the second quarter, his third of the year. T.T. Barber also returned an interception 24 yards for a TD. The previous MT season record for interceptions returned for touchdowns was three, set to 1970 and 1994. Perhaps more exciting is that after winning eight games last season and not going to a bowl, MTSU is now guaranteed a bowl in its first season in Conference USA. Uh, great feeling for our team, proud of our team, excited for our team to be able to accomplish that, uh, especially after the heartbreak that we had last year. The Middle Tennessee men's basketball team got off to a 4-1 start after defeating the likes of Southern University, Akron, and the University of Arkansas Little Rock. The Blue Raiders' balanced attack had four or more players score in double figures in all four of the first games. Had a you know, playing some teams that sure had a chance to win their league, and uh, you know, in the way we had to win them, come from behind twice, tough grinding game against Akron. I think it says a lot for our team with seven new guys. The Lady Raiders basketball team got off to a one and three start to the 2013-14 season with one of the losses coming to the Lady Volunteers at the Murphy Center before a jam-packed crowd of 11,227, the second largest in women's basketball history behind another UT game in 2009. But we grow the game because look at the fan base that you saw out there. UT's fan base and our fan base. They got a passion for women's basketball. And right down the road, Final Four is going to be. And we've got to support that. Coach Insel got the 200th victory of his Blue Raider coaching career with the Lady Raiders 61-55 victory over Miami on the road. Exciting news for the MTSU tennis program and area tourism for that matter. MTSU and the city of Murfreesboro broke ground in late October on a $3.7 million tennis facility that will feature eight indoor courts, an electronic scoreboard, locker rooms, and other amenities. And it is a great day for the tennis community. Let's hear it. <laughs> the floor plan that we're proposing for the new eight indoor tennis courts. So I think what we're going to become is one of the best tennis facilities in the southeastern United States. One, two, come on, three. <laughs> We'll be able to host local, state, regional, national, and collegiate tournaments here. And we're here today to celebrate the beginning of yet another wonderful and remarkable partnership and collaboration. To the city and to the county and to MTSU, uh, Christy Houston Foundation has a check here for $500,000 for this facility that is going to be so wonderful. <laughs> the state-of-the-art tennis facility is expected to be ready by fall 2014. That's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. Have a blessed holiday season. For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. Until next time, stay true blue.